NFL Week 12 picks against the spread. Let's start with Thursday's Thanksgiving games. The Chicago Bears travel to Detroit to take on the Lions. 56% of early bettors are on the Bears, 44% on the Lions as three and a half point underdogs at home. Fat guy, who you got? I'm taking the Detroit Lions. They were able to get a bit of an upset victory against the Carolina Panthers. Caught a lot of flack for taking the Lions last week. And they didn't cut, not only covered, they won. I think maybe they're going to be able to do the same this Thursday against the Chicago Bears in another div- divisional tilt. Bears look fantastic on Monday night. Another big Khalil Mack game. Defense on point. Defenses don't play as well on the road. I'm going to take the Lions at home and I'm going to take the points. Hey, we could lose by a field goal and still win this one. The second Thanksgiving game is the Washington Redskins traveling to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. 60% of early bettors are on the Skins, only 40% on the Cowboys as 7.5 point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Ooh, this is a weird one. No Alex Smith, broken leg for him, tibia, fibia, libia. So they got the backup Colt McCoy in, playing with a backup offensive line. Whole bunch of people hurt for the Skins. Ah, it's just tough. I was kind of hoping the Skins would win the division, but it doesn't look like it's going to be so. Dallas, maybe? Dallas, you're talking about a rebuild, what, two weeks ago when they got embarrassed by the Titans? I mean, had a quiet little resurgence here, led by Ezekiel Elliott and company. I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm going to lay the points. I don't, seven and a half? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's not usually my style, but there's just a lot of uncertainty with Washington having injuries across the board. Washington's defense is still a formidable opponent. Defenses tend not to travel as well. So I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys and I'm going to lay the points. In the third and final Thanksgiving game on Thursday night, the Atlanta Falcons travel to New Orleans to take on the Saints. 34% of early bettors are on the Falcons, 66% on the Saints as 13 and a half, 13 and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who do you got? We're we're gonna catch flack again, again. Going against the Saints, again. Lose every week with them. Didn't have that many losses this week. The Saints were one of the few. I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons. They keep jacking these lines up because the Saints are embarrassing everybody. Best team in football, perhaps. But I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons because 13 and a half points is a lot. It's a lot. I'm not saying that the Falcons are going to beat the Saints. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Everyone, it's a divisional game, and 13 and a half points is a ton. New Orleans was able to win on the road in Atlanta in a thriller, more or less. Why couldn't it be the same in New Orleans? Except I get 13 and a half points. That's so many. So give me the Atlanta Falcons. Let's do a little dirty bird dance and let's just keep it close, guys. We don't need to win. Lose by 10. Lose by 10 and I'll be happy. On to Sunday's early games where the Jacksonville Jaguars travel to Buffalo to take on the Bills. 42% of early bettors are on the Jags. 58% on the Bills as three point underdogs at home. Fat guy who you got? I'm going to take Jacksonville. I do this every week. I mean, they covered this Sunday against the Steelers. But they should have won that game. They're up 16-0. Ugh. But that kind of makes me more confident going forward. They're traveling to Buffalo. Not the nicest of places to play, especially when you're coming from a nice place like Florida. I mean, f- nice sense in a sense of weather, not in terms of, uh, yeah, you know. I'm going to take the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to lay the three points. I'm not exactly scared by the stable of quarterbacks between Derek Anderson, Josh Allen, and Matt Barkley. I mean, Barkley did look pretty good against the Jets two weeks ago, but I'm going to take, this is a much different Jacksonville team with a better defense. I'm going to take the Jaguars, or Jaguars on the road, and I'm going to lay the three points. Next up, the Oakland Raiders travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Still too early for any betting percentages, but the Baltimore Ravens are going to be 10 and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? I got the Oakland Raiders. I'm not going to fly by and take the that so Ravens, Ravens. I'm taking the Oakland Raiders, and I'm taking the 10.5 points. Nice little upset victory against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, And Baltimore, exciting. Starting, I don't know, future franchise quarterback, maybe. Lamar Jackson, a little bit interesting. Most rushes by a QB ever there, Big Ryan? I believe so. I think he finished with 27 carries. 27 carries is a ton for a quarterback. I'm not sure that's a recipe of success. Something we haven't quite seen before. It's interesting. Like, this game's at least interesting. And Oakland hasn't been in an interesting game in some time. I mean, I, they did pull off an upset against Arizona, like I'd mentioned previous. But uh, this, this game is definitely interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. Ten and a half is a lot of points, though. I mean, silver and black are trash. or bottom of the league, them and the cards. But I'm going to take the Oakland Raiders 
and I'm going to take 10 and a half points. Next up, the San Francisco 49ers travel to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. 57% of early bettors are on San Fran, only 43% on the Buccaneers as three and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Oh, this is another ugly. It's a slob knobber. It's a real slob knobber of a game. Oh, there we go. My nose is bleeding again. I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers and I'm going to take the three and a half points. I like Kyle Shanahan. I, I think that team can be competitive. Uh, the Bucks aren't exactly a home run hitter here. They don't know who's going to be playing at quarterback. Everything's wishy-washy and undecided and disorganized. I'm waiting for Dirk Cutter to get the axe or perhaps hang from one of his belts from a doorknob. But either or, whatever comes first, he will be gone at the end of this season. I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers in the points because I did the Bucks. We don't even know who's playing quarterback. Kyle Shanahan can coach. Dirk Cutter can't. I mean, that's really the deciding point in this game. This is an ugly one. Let's move to the next. Next up, the New York Giants travel to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. 56% of early bettors are on the Giants. Only 44% on the Eagles as four and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Ooh, we're going with the Philadelphia Eagles. Giants are on a two game winning streak. That was the last time anyone ever said that. Feels like two years. It honestly does. I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles, who just got embarrassed. Two games in a row, might I add. Might I add. The Cowboys embarrassed them at home, and the Saints did very Saints things, and they marched all over them in the Big Easy. But I, I kind of like them in this game. They trounced the Giants on the road in their first game, and I think it was the Thursday night game. It was a primetime matchup. So I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to lay the four and a half points. And uh, let's put this win streak to an end. Next up, the Cleveland Browns travel to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. 45% of early bettors are on the Browns. 55% on the Bengals as three-point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Uh, we're going Bungles. I seem to do this every week. Cincinnati, I, I think they're a better team than Cleveland. Simple as that. Uh, I have to lay three points at home, but that means the book thinks they're neutral teams. I disagree. I think Cincinnati's better than Cleveland. I mean, my Browns are are trending upwards, but I mean, they were just basement dwelling for so long. I do like this coaching switch, though. It does make them better. I, if this was Hugh Jackson's team, I'd be betting much more on the Bengals than I intend to on the weekend. But with Greg Williams, it seems to be more uh, under control. I mean, maybe, maybe they'll hire Condoleezza Rice. That would be great because you, know, you can run a country. You can run a football team, right? Well, Secretary of State, regardless, one of the most ridiculous headlines I've ever heard. But let's take the Cincinnati Bengals and let's lay the three points. Next up, the New England Patriots travel to New York to take on the Jets. 90% of early bettors are on the Patriots as 10 and a half point favorites on the road. Fat guy, who you got? Odd. Oh, everyone, double digit dogs at home historically, historically make money. So when that there's an opportunity to do so, I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah, the Jets are floundering. They look terrible, but this is a great spot to take them. Because they haven't really changed much. They've just had good performances and bad. And when you're on a streak of bad performances, you tend to get more points thrown your way. Do I really think New England should be laying 10.5 on the road in a visual matchup? Probably not. I mean, they are the, pa the mighty Patriots, but not necessarily the Patriots of old. I mean, they've, they've had some problems on the roster. They're weak in a bunch of areas, slow in others. I mean, they're still the Patriots. They're still favored to win, rightfully so. But 10.5 points is a lot. I mean, Patriots by 10, is that so unreasonable? Patriots win. Jets cover, so let will go in Jets, and I, I feel reasonable about this one. The final Sunday morning game is the Seattle Seahawks travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. 66% of early bettors are on the Seahawks, only 34% on the Panthers as three and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? I'm gonna shout out to my boy Jay Norman, and I'm gonna take the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I always fade them, I always shoot on the Panthers. I think this is a nice spot for him, to be perfectly honest. Uh, there we go. Said perfectly honest. Carolina kind of historically does well against the Seahawks. At least the uh, Pete Carroll-led Seahawks, let's say. I'm going to take the Panthers I'm at home. I think the Seattle's kind of due for a letdown. They had some decent games in the past few weeks. Thursday nighter. Decent game against Green Bay. Pulled off a victory. So I like a little letdown here against Carolina. I like the Panthers at home. And this one's a reasonable one for me. Moving on to the midday games on Sunday, the Arizona Cardinals travel to LA to take on the Chargers. Only 13% of early bettors are on the cards as 13 point underdogs on the road. Fat guy, who you got? I'm taking the Cardinals. 
I mean, it's a divisional game. I get 13 points. That's a lot. And there's only 13% of betters on the Cardinals uh, this early. But there's a reason for that. They lost to the Raiders. You got your hearing that right. They lost to the Raiders, which is perfect for setting up this line. 13 seems inflated. I think 10, 10 and a half is probably where I would put it at. 13 seems a bit excessive. I'm going to take the Bird Gang on the road against the Chargers. And the Chargers, oh, how do you blow that one? How do you blow that one? I mean, Philip Rivers, it doesn't take a knee, just throws it at the guy's feet. Nice one there, Riv. The Buick Riviera had an okay game, but he kind of blew it at the end. Uh, and the defense, uh, you can't stop Case Keenum? Come on. All right, I, people are expecting a bounce back, but that doesn't mean they're going to blow the cards out of the water. 13 is just too many. Let's go, Bird Gang. Next up, the Miami Dolphins travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Still too early for betting percentages, but the Colts will be 7.5 point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Easy for me. I like the Miami Dolphins. You get 7.5, I can lose by a touchdown and win. That's awesome. Is Indy really that much better than Miami Dolphins? I, I mean, they are. They're better. But to 7.5 points just seems excessive. I'm using the word excessive because I think these lines are crazy. That's why we've had a couple good weeks because we've uh, been taking the underdogs because all these numbers are so huge. Seven and a half is just too big for me. Indy trounced Tennessee, trounced them. And I think they're going to maybe have a tighter contest with Miami. And now the interesting thing to point out is Indy's become kind of a complete team, which is weird to say because they've been so uh, destitute in spots uh, in the recent years. Good job, uh, General Manager Chris Ballard. That team uh, might be looking decent going forward. Might be a little dark horse for the division here. Might, might be able to give Houston a run for its money. I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins, though, on the road, and I'm going to get the 7.5 points. And I hope Miami's defense can have a better performance than Tennessee's and keep it close. Keep it within a touchdown. The final Sunday midday game is the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Denver to take on the Broncos. 58% of early bettors are on the Steelers, only 42% on the Broncos at home as 3.5 point underdogs. Fat guy, who you got? Oh, Denver. But it's not because it's not I think Denver's a better team than Pittsburgh. I, they aren't. But Denver's at home, and Denver's just a hard place to play. What a nice advantage that is, having your stadium there. Like, you, like you get a benefit of win percentage right off the get-go. It's a kind of a good spot. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos because I get three and a half points, and I'm at home. Uh, the Steelers, they're quietly uh, on a pretty big win streak here, eh, guys? Steelers look pretty good. They pulled off a nice comeback victory against the Jacksonville Jaguars, a team that's kind of... Uh, I haunted them more or less because they embarrassed them twice on the road last year. And they had a pretty pretty good revenge game here on the weekend. Now, they didn't cover. They didn't cover. And I'm saying that could happen again in Denver. They could win by three, and the Broncos will still cover. So let's go Denver Broncos. Eh, I'm a little tentative about it. Now on to Sunday Night Football where the Green Bay Packers travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Early betting percentages are pretty split. 53% on Green Bay, 47% on Minnesota as four and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? And that delivery was as sloppy as the gravy on your sweatshirt. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings. They need a bounce back performance. I mean, Green, Green Bay, I don't trust the coaching right now either. There's uh, probably a bit of a riff, I would imagine. They're, they're usually good at keeping that stuff to the back page. But I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings, and I I can sense something bad happening. I can sense a firing, something like a big Minnesota win and a Green Bay firing. The, the, the only thing is, betting against Aaron Rodgers is always a nightmare. I mean, I don't love doing it, but I'm going to in this spot, especially laying points against Aaron Rodgers, too. It's a tough one, but I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings. I think their defense needs to show up. They're in danger of not winning the division. Chicago Bears are kind of running away now with it. Uh, so let's go Vikings, and let's, come on, let's, let's put a beat down on the Packers. On to Monday Night Football, where the Tennessee Titans travel to Houston to take on the Texans. Still too early for betting percentages, but the Houston Texans are going to be 5.5 point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Oh, we are going Tennessee Titans. Yeah, they look absolutely terrible, terrible against the Colts. They're a polarizing team, though. You look great against the Cowboys. You look great against New England. You get absolutely annihilated a few weeks ago by Baltimore and then again by the Colts on the road. Now, they're they're becoming kind of like a weird prime time. Like, this is the second one in, what, two, three weeks? So I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans because I get five and a half points. I like it. It's a divisional game. I think they can keep it close. 
And uh, I think they're going to show up. I want to see the Tennessee's D do, it th- do its thing. So let's go Tennessee. And maybe we can get some sort of offensive performance this week. I mean, it's alternating kind of. Looked great last week. Looked sh- this one. So let's go for a strong performance for the Tennessee Titans. And I want to see that defense really hunker down on the Houston Texans. All right, fat guy. On to the lightning round. Let's start off with Chicago at Detroit. Detroit Lions. Washington at Dallas. The Cowboys over the Comanches. Atlanta at New Orleans. Hot Atlanta. Jacksonville at Buffalo. Jag Rags. Oakland at Baltimore. Oakland Raiders. San Francisco at Tampa Bay. Niner Nation. The New York Giants at Philadelphia. Philadelphia Eagles. Cleveland at Cincy. Cincinnati Bengals. New England at the Jets. Let's go out. Let's go Joe Namath and the Jets. Seattle at Carolina. Carolina in a bounce back victory. On to Sunday's midday games, the Arizona Cardinals at LAC. Let's go Bird Gang. Miami at Indy. Fins up, Miami Dolphins. Pittsburgh at Denver. Denver Broncos. On to Sunday Night Football where Green Bay plays Minnesota. Put that on my tab, Minnesota Vikings. And for NFL Monday Night Football, Tennessee Titans at the Houston Texans. Tennessee Titans. All right, fat guy, let's move on to the NFL Week 11 picks against the spread. Pick 'em pool results. Congratulations to us for nine wins along with Chargers guy 619, 10 out of 10, Tolkien, Carlos Arroyo, 40 Philly Philly, as well as the one and only Wook Dog. Your thoughts on Week 11? Oh, we had a nice little week here. Nice week, 9 and 3. Nice to be top of the tables. Chargers 619 guy. That's, that's two victories for him. I think Whoop Dog had one last week as well. Pretty good, guys. Pretty good. Types people that won last weekend took mostly dogs, so they probably won this weekend. If you took favorites, you, did, you, you didn't do that well this week. And see how it kind of flip-flops? I mean, we were getting trashed, what, four weeks in a row? Now we're on a, a pretty good comeback here. So not nice to be top of the tables. Nice to be in the, in the winning column again. We're past 500 right now. We are. We're 77, 75, and 8. Good for 50.7%, which is above 500. Still below the threshold of what a casino would take as far as a cut. Yeah, we, we, we haven't beat the juice. That, that's admittable. But I think we're trending up. I think we're trending up. And, uh, God, I just I feel good about these, these last few weeks. And I feel good about this week as well. Lines are just kind of big. We can all agree on it. I think if you've been following the show for a while, you see the power of underdogs and the power of taking points. No team's go out intentionally to win by a certain number they just try and win so there are value in underdogs a lot of the time and there are value in underdogs that look terrible one week because they are able to bounce back the professional sports teams for the most part you're able to bounce back unless you're a hugh jackson's cleveland brown then 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 you're capable of very very little bronies that's it for us good luck with your nfl week 12 picks and subscribe for more big ryan the fat guy Who has an Audi belly button? That's just gross, dude.